I'm going to share my screen. Oh, um, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. So maybe just enable it for me. Right, yeah, one sec. Okay, cool. Um, until that happens, do people wanna share, is everyone a technical writer or any other professions joining us today? Maybe you guys can write in the chat um, if anybody has a different background than technical writing that's joining today. Okay, we are a lot of technical writers. Oh, Java developer. Okay, we've got developers in the house. IT consultant who writes a lot, nice. Product management. Okay, perfect. So now I should be able to share my screen. And uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes, okay. So I've got my presentation and we're gonna play. All right, so welcome everyone to this Git Basics workshop by me, Anna. Um, so just a couple introductions. Who am I? Who's this person giving this workshop today? <clears throat> so my name is Anna Skulikari and I'm currently a technical writer. However, I started off in the tech space as a UX designer. So I used to live in London and there I worked as a UX designer. And now I live in Barcelona. So when I moved to Barcelona, I decided to learn to code. Uh, as a UX designer, I felt like I could design digital experiences uh, in a user-friendly way, but I had no idea how those experiences were actually built. <clears throat> so I felt like I was sort of like an architect, um, but I wasn't the construction company. I couldn't take those blueprints um, that the designers made and actually build them. So when I moved to Barcelona, I attended a coding boot camp and I learned to code. And then afterwards, I got a job as a front end developer. And while I was working as a front end developer, I realized I really had to understand how Git worked in order to work smoothly with my colleagues. I had learned a bit of Git while I was in the coding boot camp when I was in school but I worked on all my projects alone. So I'd only use the bare, bare basics of Git. And when I <clears throat> started working as a front-end developer, I realized that whenever I had to do anything that I thought was um, complicated using Git, I freaked out. I was so scared that I was gonna destroy the repository, you know, take down the website. So I always had to ask for help from the senior developers. Um, and I was really scared. And at some point I really decided that I was gonna conquer this fear and I was going to understand how Git worked and I was gonna master it. So I started you know, pouring myself into learning Git really well. And at some point I realized that the resources out there that teach Git are not really user-friendly for people coming into tech from non-technical backgrounds. And I just felt like there was a more simple and a more human way of teaching Git. So I came up with this creative project to create an online course that teaches Git in a more simple and tangible way. And that uh, online course is what this uh, workshop is based off of. So um, this is the online course, it's on Udemy. Uh, I had lots of people take it and I have created this workshop, which is based on some of the first lessons in that online course. Um, and now I've transitioned from being a front end developer into technical writing. I decided I really enjoy tech communication and explaining things in simple ways. Um, and yeah, now I work as a technical writer at a fintech company. Um, so let's get started. Let's move on a couple announcements um this might be revision for some of you uh, some of you may have done some of the things that we're going to be doing today for example making a commit or making a branch however i'm hoping that the way that i introduce these topics will help you build a different mental model of git and a more solid mental model of git because i think a lot of us may learn git uh, but we get a false mental model we don't really understand how things are uh, happening so I'm hoping that I can help you build a better mental model. This is a just watch presentation. So this is not a code along presentation. You don't need to be doing anything on your computer during the presentation. Just listen to what I'm 
um, saying and to how I'm communicating the concepts. Uh, like we mentioned before, you can use the chat for communication, but I will be looking at it at the end of the presentation. And in terms of duration, usually the content of the presentation lasts about half an hour. Um, maybe if I do my job correctly and I go a bit slower than I usually do, it will be a bit longer than that. But I think that's a good amount of time because Git is quite an intense topic. I think that's a good amount of time to um, give a nice uh, digestible introduction. So what we're gonna be covering today, we're gonna to be going over the difference between Git and GitHub. We're going to be going over making a commit really in depth, then the staging area really in depth. And finally, we're gonna to touch upon what branches really are. And throughout the presentation, I'm gonna be uncovering some very common misconceptions. So what are Git and GitHub? So I see these two terms uh, used interchangeably really often, and um, they're two completely different things. So that, you know, seeing them used interchangeably is what uh, makes me realize that people don't understand the difference. So Git is a version control system. It's a program that you download onto your computer, and it helps you keep track of all the versions of your code. And it's also really useful for collaborating with other people. On, on a project. Um, think of Git sort of like Microsoft Word uh, in the fact that it's a program downloaded on your computer. Um, on the other hand, GitHub is a company. Uh, it's a company that allows you to host projects that use Git on a remote server somewhere, um, so in the cloud. Um, but GitHub, you know, there's other companies that allow you to host your projects that use Git. So for example, GitLab or Bitbucket, these are other companies that do the exact same job that GitHub does. Um, it's just GitHub was really smart to use the term Git in its name. Um, so let's, uh, so GitHub, if, if, if Git is sort of like Microsoft Word, as in a program downloaded on your computer, then GitHub is sort of like Google Drive, like a place where you can store things in the cloud. So let's go, um, show this really explicitly. I'm going to open up my terminal. So this is my terminal and in this terminal I can type in commands and I'm gonna type in a command called git dash dash version and then I'm gonna press enter. So what I'm gonna see now is it's gonna tell me what version of git I have installed on my computer because like we mentioned, git is a program downloaded on our computer. On the other hand, if I were to type in github dash dash version and press enter. It's just gonna tell me, I have no idea what you're talking about. And that's because GitHub isn't a program uh, downloaded on my computer. It's a company that allows me to host my projects on a remote server. So now that we have gone over that, um, let's go over making a commit in depth. So when we first start learning Git, we usually come across diagrams such as these. And whereas these are a good starting point when we start learning Git, I think that they can be misleading in some ways. So therefore, throughout this presentation, I'm gonna be building up uh, a new mental model and offering a new diagram that you can use in order to think about how Git works. So let's get started. Let's... Um, first start by building, by creating our project folder. So right now I'm going to go onto my desktop by using a command called CD, which stands for change directory. And directory is just another word for folder. And I'm gonna pass in the name of the directory I wanna go into and I'm gonna go onto my desktop. So right now in my terminal, I'm on my desktop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a project folder and we're gonna see that folder be created over here. So I'm gonna use the mkdir command, which stands for make directory. And I'm gonna pass in the name of the directory or folder that I wanna make. I'm gonna call it novel. Then when I press enter, we're gonna see that that project folder has been created. I'm gonna open that up so we can see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the terminal here and then I'm gonna have my file system here as well. So you can see how things are happening simultaneously. 
All right, so now it's important to note that in our file system, we have uh, two kinds of files, visible files and hidden files. These are all visible files, but we can also see hidden files if on a Mac we press command shift dot. Now we have all these hidden files that are shown. And as you can see, they're all kind of grayed out. And most of them start with uh, a dot. The file name starts with a dot. Um, so on a Microsoft operating system, like a computer that has that operating system, I think you have to go into the settings in order to see hidden files. So now I'm going to go uh, onto my, into my uh, novel project folder. And I'm gonna do that as well in the terminal. So CD novel. And I'm gonna use the very first git command, which is gonna be git init. Then I'll press enter. And what we'll see is that git tells us initialized empty git repository in this folder. And here, you can see that this .git folder has been created. And this .git folder is a hidden folder, which is why maybe you haven't seen it before. Let me open this folder up. All right. So we can see a bunch of folders and files in here. And at the moment, all of these may seem like gibberish, like what is all this stuff? But we'll be going over some of these throughout this presentation. All right, let's go back to the presentation. There we go. So what we've done up to now is we've made a project folder and inside that project folder, we have our git.git .git directory. So now I'm gonna quickly distinguish between the two of those. All right, so our project folder sort of represents our working directory. The working directory is like a workspace. It's where we can add files, we can delete files, and we can edit files. On the other hand, the .git folder is basically what represents our repository. And within the repository, there are two spaces that I wanna point out. First, we have the staging area. And the staging area is kind of like a rough draft space. It's um, where you can add updated files in order to really craft what you wanna include in a commit. Um, and then all the commits live in a place called the commit history. Now, what is a commit? A commit is a version of your project. Um, a very common misconception is that commits are changes between one version of your project to, and another, but that is not the case. Uh, commits in Git are complete standalone versions of your project every commit has a reference to every single file that is part of that version of your project. And commits have um, this thing called a hash, which is 40 letters and numbers. Uh, each commit hash is unique and it basically acts like a name for the commit. It's like a way to refer to the commit. So a very common misconception debunked is that commits are not changes commits are standalone versions of a project. Um, once someone understands this, they've really understood a really important point uh, in, in Git and in using Git. All right. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna create our very first file uh, for in our project folder. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use a source code editor called Visual Studio Code. So it's opening up. Uh, I'm going to open up my novel folder that's on my desktop. And at the moment, we can see that I have no files in this project folder. And here, there's no files, but we're going to make our very first file. So I'm going to add a new file and I'm going to call it chapter1.txt. And let me just move this stuff a bit. All right. And in this file, I'm just gonna type chapter one, um, starting the first chapter of my novel. And I'm gonna save that file. All right, so we can see now that this file has been added to my project folder, it's in my project. And now I'm gonna use another git command called git status. 
what git status does is it tells me the state of my working directory and my staging area and the difference between the two of them. So I'm going to type in git status and I'm going to press enter. And what Git is going to tell me is that there are no commits yet, which is understandable. I haven't actually made any commits yet. Um, but it's telling me you have an untracked file called chapter1.txt. So what Git is telling me at the moment is that there's a file in my working directory, but this file is not yet part of my repository. I have not yet added it to my staging area. Uh, it's not part of any commits. Therefore, it's not yet being version controlled. So let's see this in the diagram. So we have the working directory. And in the working directory, we have our file. But this file is not yet part of my repository. I haven't yet added it to the staging area. And it's not included in any commit because I have no commits yet. So. The next thing we want to do then is to actually add this file to the staging area in order to prepare for it to be included in a commit. In order to add it to the staging area, actually Git has already told me what I need to do. It says use git add to track. So I'm going to use the git add command to add this file to the staging area. Before I do that though, I just want to point out inside the doc git folder, you can see that there is no index file. Um, but that's soon going to change. So I'm going to type in git add, and then I can pass in the name of the file. In some cases, if I have multiple files and I don't want to be passing in the name of every file, you can use a dot to represent the current directory. So it can add the files in your current directory. So I'm doing git add dot, pressing enter. And we can see here that an index file was created. So this index file is basically what represents the staging area. Um, now it may seem in the terminal like nothing happened, but if I use the git status command again, we can see that it tells me there are no commits yet, but now there are changes to be committed. And it's telling me that there is this file chapter1.txt that's in my staging area. So let's go back to the, pres to the presentation. So what's happened now is that this file has been added to the staging area. Now, it's important to note another common misconception here. People sometimes think that this file moves from the working directory into the staging area, but actually that's not the case. This file gets copied over from the working directory into the staging area. So that's another common misconception debunked. Files are not moved from the working directory to the staging area. Files are copied over from the working directory to the staging area. All right. Finally, the last thing we want to do is we want to actually make our commit. So in order to make a commit, we're going to use the git commit command. We're going to pass in the dash m option, which stands for message. And then we're going to type in a message. Um, I'm just going to write adding chapter 1. Uh, normally, when you're making a commit message, you should definitely make sure to make it a descriptive message, something that will help to communicate to other people that you're collaborating with um, what, you know, what you've worked on in this particular version of your project, what's important in this commit. Um, my, my message is not too descriptive, but that's okay. So I'm going to press enter. And it's made my commit. And now I'm going to use another git command called git log and what git log does is it gives me uh, a list of all the commits in my project in reverse chronological order so i'm going to type in git log press enter and we can see here is my commit this is the commit hash that i mentioned those 40 letters and numbers um, that are unique and that act as a name for the commit it tells me who made the commit, when they made the commit, and what the commit message was. All right, let's go back. <clears throat> so now we have our first commit in our commit history. All right, that was the first part. Now I want to go over the staging area in depth. So 
a very common misconception is that once you make a commit, your staging area is wiped clean. But that is not the case. Uh, whenever you're working on a project and you're using Git, you are looking at a particular version of your project. And that means you are on a particular commit. And it's all the files that are part of that commit that will be in your staging area. So in order to look at this more explicitly and to explore the staging area and how it is this rough draft space where you can really craft what you want to include in your next commit. Um, sorry, misconception debunked. Staging area is not empty. It has all the files of the commit you are on. So in order to explore um, the staging area more in depth, I've prepared another project. Um, and this project, uh, I've already made a commit. This project has four files in it chapter one, two, three, and four. So let's go explore this project. Um, this project is called Novella. You can see it here. Um, I'm going to open it up, uh, open up a new window in my source code editor, and I'm gonna open up that folder. So that's Novella. As you can tell, I love mm -hmm. writing, I just novels, novellas, everything. Um, all right. We can see chapter one, two, three, and four. There's no contents, but that will change soon. Uh, in my terminal, I'm gonna cd dot dot. So I'm gonna go back a folder out of the novel folder. And I'm gonna go into the novella folder. So cd into novella. So we're in the novella folder in the terminal now. And also in my file system, just so we can see things happening, we're gonna go into the novella folder and we can see the four files in there. So if I use the git status command now, it's going to tell me nothing to commit working tree clean. So like we mentioned, the git status command tells us the status of our working directory and of our staging area. And it tells us if there's any difference between the two. And at the moment, everything is the same. However, that's gonna change now because I'm gonna make some edits. So let's suppose that I want to make some changes to chapter three of my novel. So I'm going to type in chapter three, let's write stuff. And I'm going to also make changes to chapter four of my novel. I'm going to type in chapter four, writing more stuff. Uh, and I'm going to save that. So now I've made changes to some files in my uh, project. And if I use the git status command again, Git is telling me, okay, now you've made some changes. These changes are not staged for commit. In other words, these stages, these changes are not yet, uh, have not yet been added to my staging area. And therefore uh, they're not, they wouldn't be included in my next commit yet. Um, but we can change that by adding them. So we're gonna use the git add command. And instead of typing out chapter three.txt, chapter four.txt, I'm gonna just pass in a dot and it's gonna add both those files to my staging area. So I'm gonna press enter. And it may seem like nothing happened, but if we use the git status command again, we can see that those files have been added to my staging area now. And we can go see that in the diagram. So suppose these files before were the version one of the file. Then I went in and I edited chapter three and four. So it's sort of as if those files were updated to become the version two of those files. And then I added those updated files to the staging area. So it's as if the, the files in my staging area updated to become uh, the version two of those files. But what happens now if I decide that actually I'm not yet ready to include the changes that I made to my chapter four um, in my in my next commit, in my next version of my project. Uh, I, don't, I don't yet wanna commit these changes. Um, you know, I still wanna work on it or I don't like something that I've written in my chapter four. Uh, so I can take the updated file of chapter four.txt out of the staging area. And that's why I refer to the index as a rough draft space because you can really add and remove files uh, in order to really decide what you wanna include in your next commit in the next version of your project. So in order to remove that file from the staging area, I'm gonna use the command git reset. I'm gonna pass in a head in capital letters, head. 
and the file name that I want to take out of the staging area. So chapter four dot txt. Then when I press enter, it's going to tell me it's unstaged these changes. And now if I use the git status command again, it's going to tell me that there is a file in my staging area, chapter three dot txt, that would be included in my next commit. And there's also an updated file in my working directory that's not in my staging area that won't be included in my next commit. And now I can make my commit. So I'm just gonna type in git commit dash m and pass in a um, commit message. I'm gonna be very non-descriptive and I'm just gonna type in second commit. All right. So now if we use that git log command that we used before, git log, it will give me the list of commits in my repository in reverse chronological order. So we have the first commit and we have the second commit. All right, let's go back to the presentation and see all of that. So I decided that I didn't want those updated changes in my chapter four file to be included in my next commit. So I took that updated file out of my staging area and it basically reverted back to the version one of the file. Then I made my commit. And now in my commit history, I have two commits. All right. Now for the final last part of the presentation, we're going to talk about branches. So we're going to be focusing on the commit history. So let's focus in on that. And we're going to go explore what are branches in Git. Just a quick point, because I forgot to point this out before. Uh, the commit history is basically represented by the objects folder. I just realized I forgot to mention that before, so I wanted to mention that. All right. So what are branches in Git? Uh, in order to explore that, we're going to go inside the .git folder. Then we're going to go inside the refs folder then inside the heads folder. And finally, we're going to find this file called master. And I'm going to open up this file. All right, what do we see in this file? This file has a commit hash inside it. And this commit hash, you can see it starts with 4685, is the exact same commit hash that's over here. That's our second commit. And you can see it starts with 4685. And what we can see is that next to this commit hash are some parentheses, and we can see the term master there. So what are branches in Git? Branches are just pointers to commits. Um, a very common misconception, uh, or so as you can see here in the diagram, you just have a pointer to a commit and the name of the branch, master. So a very common misconception debunked. Branches are not like tree branches. Branches are simply pointers to commits. This is one of the most common misconceptions, and it's because of the way that even places like GitHub and other um, other like technology, you know, UIs represent branches because they make them sort of seem like they're like branching out. And even the the word itself is very confusing. Um, but branches are just pointers to commits. So um, what if we want to create another branch? First of all, in order to see a list of the branches in our uh, repository, we use the git branch command. So here we can see that we have the master branch. And because it has an asterisk next to it and it's in green, we can see that we're on the master branch. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to create another branch. So to create another branch, we're going to use the git branch command, and then we're going to pass in the name of a branch that doesn't yet exist. So I'm going to call it feature one. What you're going to see is that a file is going to be created over here inside the heads folder. So I'm going to press enter. And there it is. This file was created. So let's open up feature one and see what's inside that file. Okay. It has the exact same commit hash that, that the master branch uh, had. So feature one, uh, the feature one branch is pointing to the exact same commit. And we can see that if we use the git log command, 
we can see that we have our first commit and then we have our second commit. And we can see that now both master and feature one are inside the parentheses next to this commit. Another thing I wanna point out is if I type in git branch again, I'm gonna see a list of the branches in my repository. And even though I made the feature one branch, I'm actually still on the master branch. And we're gonna explore that in a second. Um, but that just, yeah, it just goes to show that just because you make a branch does not mean that you switch into that branch. Um, so let's go to the diagram. We have our commit, we have the master branch pointing to our commit, and then our feature one branch points to that same commit. And whenever we make a branch, that branch will point to the commit that we were on when we made that branch. All right, back to the desktop. We've been seeing this thing called head in capital letters. Um, but what is this head in capital letters? So let's go explore that. I'm gonna open up this file head and I'm gonna see what's inside it. I can see that inside it has a reference to the refs folder, then inside the heads folder and the master file. So basically what head is, is it's a reference of the branch that we're currently on. It's like a pointer to the branch that we're currently on. And you can see that here, it's literally head in capital letters is literally pointing to master. So let's go see that in the diagram. We have our master branch, our feature one branch, our commit, and then we have head pointing to master. So how do we switch branches? How do we you know, go onto the feature one branch? We're gonna use the git checkout command. Let me just close this. We're gonna use, okay, we're gonna use the git checkout command. We're gonna pass in the name of the branch that we wanna switch into. So in our case, that's feature one. And then we can press enter and it's gonna tell us, okay, I've switched to branch feature one. And now if I open up head again, we can see that now it references feature one. And if I use the git log command again, we can see that now head is pointing to feature one. So um, let's make, or no, sorry, let's go back to the presentation. So now we can see that head is gonna shift and point to the feature one branch. All right, now the final thing that we wanna do is to make another commit. Luckily, we already have something in our uh, working directory that we can add to the staging area and then include in our next commit. If we use the git status command, it's going to tell us that we have this updated file in our working directory that's not yet been added to the staging area. We can add that to the staging area and we can include that in our next commit. Uh, and I'm just gonna very simply call this third commit and I'm gonna press enter. All right, now if I use the git log command again, I can see I have my first commit, I have my second commit and I have my third commit. Now my feature one branch is pointing to the third commit but the master branch is still pointing just to the second commit. In other words, whenever we make commits, it's um, the branch that we're currently on that updates to point to the latest commit. So if we go to the diagram, we can see that we made our third commit and now feature one is updated to point to that commit. So that was um, all I wanted to say for today about branches. Um, that was it. Those were the sections and the topics that I wanted to cover in this introduction to Git. I'm hoping that some of it made sense. I'm hoping maybe it cleared up some things for you. Um, there's obviously a lot more to explore, um, especially once we get into merging and working with remote repositories, uh, you know, fetching changes, pushing changes, and all of that stuff. Um, today, we just covered the difference between Git and GitHub. We covered making a commit in depth, the staging area in depth, and then a bit about branches. Um, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, I'm, I debunked some misconceptions you may have had. Um, and then I will 
pass in some links into the chat uh, in case anyone is interested. Obviously, in my online course, I go over a lot more topics. Um, it's two hours long, so you know. Um, so I can drop a link for that if anybody's interested in exploring Git further. Also on YouTube, I have like the first eight lessons for free and on Udemy as well, actually. You can watch the first eight lessons. So all the content we covered today, you can watch. You'll also be able to watch this, this presentation itself on YouTube. Um, I'll, I'll pass in a link to my LinkedIn because like I mentioned, if anybody can tell me at least one thing I could improve in this presentation, uh, that would be extremely helpful. Um, and yeah, I recently wrote a article for Freed Code Camp as well. I don't know if anybody would want that. Um, what I'm gonna do now, or actually I think I have a couple more things I wanted to share. One last thing I wanted to share before I stop sharing my screen and I get to actually look at uh, you all and, and uh, we can do some Q&A is um, I would love to do this presentation for this presentation or even other presentations on Git uh, for more companies, uh, organizations, schools, other entities in general. So if you like your company or you know someone or know anyone that would be interested in this type of a presentation, then please also do let me know. I'll also remember to drop in my, um, my email. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. I swear that was the last slide. And um, we can go into Q and A. Uh, all right, so let me go into right, I think you. we yeah. have, um, well, thank, first of all, thank you so much, Anna. Really wonderful uh, session, uh, really explanatory and clear. Um, so I believe we have one question from Laura. Um, can you see it? Uh, let me, uh, it says click view options next to your viewing on a screen at the top. You can see, oh, no, never mind. That's not right below. So there is the one of the purpose of having, what is the purpose of having multiple pointers, branches pointing to the same comic version? Ah, yes, here we go. Um, so, okay, wait, let me just, what is the purpose of having multiple? Okay, so normally what happens is that you will make a branch pointing to that version, but then you're going to start making commits on that branch. So that branch will progress. So normally you don't actually stay with the pointers pointing to the same commit. At the very end, when I made that third commit, you saw the feature one branch progress. And that's usually, that's basically what's always going to happen. Um, so good question. Um, all right, any other questions? Yes, so next is a question from uh, Heike. Yeah, when do you create a branch? Um, so this can obviously maybe differ between developers and technical writers, but actually maybe it doesn't. Basically you create a branch whenever you wanna work on a specific part of your project, um, but maybe you don't want to affect the main, main like stream of your project. Um, developers often make a branch when they're working on a feature of an app. Um, also, especially you want to make a branch if you're not sure if the thing that you're going to work on is going to work out, you know, so you don't really want to, you don't want to, let's say, affect the main manuscript or the main text. So you're like, okay, let me make a branch. Let me try some stuff out. And this can work with writing as well. You know, you're like, okay, let me, let me try to write this in a different way. So let me make a branch. Let me try some experimental writing or some different writing. And then you can decide, okay, do I like this? Do I wanna merge this branch? Uh, if you do, then you can merge it. If you don't, you can scrap it. You'd be like, okay, never mind. L deleting the branch, getting rid of that and going back to my main thing. And you can start with a new branch again. Um, so yeah, it's when you wanna work on a, on a particular part of your project. And also branches are really important for when you're working with other people. So if, uh, me and you know my coworker Tom are working on a project. I can make a branch, he can make a branch, and so we can work on different parts of the project and then we can merge later. Um, so he can work on chapter one, I can work on chapter two, and then we can bring in the chapters together at some later point in time. Um, all right, let me see any other questions. Which approach to branch flow is suitable for the doc writing teamwork? Honestly, I have no opinions and no thoughts on this because I think that really just depends. I mean, it depends on what your teammates agree on. It depends on 
the you know what your company does uh, it depends on your particular project it's it's really really dependent so i don't have anything to say on that all i have to say is communicate with your teammates with your coworkers and make sure that you guys all agree and that you are openly communicating about how things work um why would i want to switch branches is something that might be improved oh okay 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 great awesome i'm glad that helped um Okay, can I work on binary files and commit them? I could have an SVG. Uh, I don't know too much about that, to be honest. I think you can though. I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, Git is pretty powerful, um, but I, I'm not too confident on that because honestly, I've just written code mainly or written text. Um, does it matter what you call your branch? So if you're working on your own, I guess it doesn't really matter. If you're working with a team, your team might have a uh, convention. So for example, teams that I've worked on and that I'm currently working on use the convention of like putting like the JIRA ticket for anyone that works, works with JIRA tickets, uh, the JIRA ticket in the, in the name of the branch. Um, so your team might have like rules for what your branches should be called because again, this helps with the organization. Um, but other than that, it doesn't matter. Master is simply the default branch that Git creates. Um, so. I think that naming will be changing soon because of various discussions in the community uh, about that name, but yeah. So I hope that that's kind of clear. And then I think uh, in my doc team, we're using branch per feature. Okay. Oh yeah, here it says about the JIRA ticket. Um, okay. Oh, Laura, Laura, thanks for clarifying about the binary files. Um, all right. Are there any other questions? Oh, maybe what I'll do real quick is share some of those links in the chat, just in case anybody is interested in any of those links. Um, so let me just quickly do that. And until then, maybe there'll be a couple more questions. I don't know. So that's the course. Um, this is my LinkedIn. And if anybody wants to connect on there, uh, I'll also type in my email because I'm not too huge on social media. Um, but like I mentioned, so my name is Anna Skulikari. It's a Greek name, so you can copy and paste that if it's a bit too complicated. And if you, you know, wanna get in touch with me in any other um, mediums, you can find me. I have a Twitter, I just don't use it much. Um, but if you wanna get in touch there. And this is the, an article on Freed Code Camp that I wrote, which covers a lot of the material that I covered today. And then this is a YouTube channel where I have some videos as well. Um, and I thought that might be helpful. So anyways, I put that there. Um, okay, pro tip, you don't have to install Git. Um, any other questions? Um, is there anything that people struggle with Git in particular? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I think the dot git folder is something that a lot of people do not actually like, I didn't even know that that existed for the longest time. I'm not even like the, the day that that became like that I realized I didn't even know that hidden files existed, let alone that I had this dot git folder. So that's the thing about git so much stuff happens behind the scenes and you don't see it happening. And that's why it's so hard to understand. And you're like, what? Like, I'm doing things, but I don't see things happening. This is not user friendly. Um, but yeah. Okay. In terms of what's the difference between Git reset soft versus hard? Honestly, I don't know that by heart. But the best resource for those kinds of questions is a book called Pro Git. Um, I'll just type that Pro Git. Um, and that's like the Git Bible. And that's what I basically uh, used in order to learn Git really, really well. So I would refer to that. The thing about Git is you don't need to learn things by heart. Once you have a good mental model of how it works, you can figure out everything that you need to do just by going back to the documentation. I don't know all the um, commands by heart. Like, I don't even know like 1% of the commands by heart. But what I, what I kind of understand is I have a mental model and I know how to then look up the command that I need to use. Um, all right, wait, do you have any advice, basic hygiene rules, how not to mess things up if you're working with few other people on a version control system, because what scares me the most is managing, conflicting, resetting, fetching, all of. My 
my suggestion is to get a good mental model of how Git works, because once you understand how it works and how also remote repositories, repositories work, um, shameless pitch, I go over that in my online course. Um, once you understand how it works, then you overcome that fear because you understand like, oh, when I do this, this is going to happen. If you don't understand that, then you're like, OK, but what if I do this? And then this other thing happens because you don't know, you know, you don't understand what's happening. Um, so I would say the best things to, under, to get a good mental model of Git. Is working in the cloud via GUI very different from working locally in terminal? OK. When you're using a graphical user interface, a GUI, to work with Git, you are not really like uh, to, to work with Git in particular, like source tree, for example, um, or Git Kraken, I think. I've never used them too much, um, but uh, I think as far as I know, like, you know, when you're working with Git, it's still local. It's just when you start working with remote repositories that things like GitHub is remote stuff. Git is local stuff. Um, I don't have a workshop on branches, but perhaps I should make one if there is demand for one. Oh yeah, the pro Git book is free. It's all online. The entire PDF is online for free. So that's a, it's good that someone shared that. Um, yeah, I've heard of Oh My Git. I haven't used it a lot myself, but I know a lot of people that have used it. So I think, Oh wait, is it oh my git or oh shit git? I are those different? Um, I think I know oh shit git. I don't know oh my git. I don't know if there's also any uh, like language things if I can say the s word. Um, <laughs> okay, is it really hard to get into a mess where you lose everything with git? So don't be. Oh yeah, yeah. So like Laura said, it is really hard to like git is. Git has your back. Like it's really hard to actually lose things with Git, um, like Laura said, and also especially if you um, like have stuff in a remote repository. Like it, you sh you should be okay. Usually people are more afraid with Git than they need to be. That's that's the thing. Um, let me see if I missed any questions. Okay. Okay, well, I should uh, check those, those resources out. Yeah. Yeah, Visual Studio Code. I mean, in Visual Studio Code, you can also, like instead of having type, to type in git add, you can actually just add files. Um, yeah, I just, I just show things from like the bare bones um, because once you know, once you understand how things work in the terminal, you can use all kinds of graphical user interfaces that make, make it easier to work with Git. All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Oh yeah, and you can also have a terminal panel in Visual Studio Code, that's actually true, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Uh, to push my HTML5 five, five help files, it takes too much time. Help does not work if I don't clean all the files before committing a new version. What does it work like this? I, what, I'm not 100% sure what the question means. I've never had the problem of things taking long with Git. So I don't know, maybe I've just never worked with the amount of files that, that you have, Anna. Um, so I'm not really sure, to be honest, how to answer the question. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, Anna, uh, you, can, you can activate the, the microphone if you want, like the, yeah, the one who will ask the question, if you want to clarify your question. Uh, Anna Karolivka, you may want to. Yes, so I generate a help files from Flare, Metcap Flare, and um, to to push the final version. So I, I, I cannot just copy the new version. And so the Git doesn't recognize only the changed files. It's some, for some reason, it messes up all the links. 
So first I need to just delete everything, commit, and then add new version and then push again. So it really takes a lot of time. And hmm, Interesting. Um, I wouldn't be able to help right now. Like I, I'm not able to like wrap in my mind like exactly what you're explaining, but if you like connect with me on LinkedIn afterwards and just shoot me a message, maybe we can grab like a quick call at some point and you can show me just because I'm also curious now like to see maybe this is a, a git adventure that I can go on and see if we can like solve it if there's something small maybe that that needs to be tweaked in the workflow or something okay thank you oh and uh Joanna mentioned that you can join the write the docs slack if you're not already in there um she's also curious <laughs> right yeah I'll um by the way, I'll, I'll take a chance of reminding uh, all who joined that um, all the European, well, EMEA really, meetups for Red the Docs uh, are open to, uh, to proposals. If you want to host a talk or uh, do a random workshop or um, simply organize a meetup on a specific topic, feel free to reach out to any of the organizer of the network and we'll make sure that, uh, that you get some uh, airspace all right, just sharing my LinkedIn again one more time, just in case anybody wants to connect and didn't see the link before. <laughs> I mean, then again, like I mentioned, just type my name into the Google search bar and I'm the only Anna Skulikari in this world. Uh, my fancy Greek name gives me that uh, privilege. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and also since um, some of you may have joined directly from media.com, if you want to join the Write the Docs community Slack channels, uh, here's the URL. It's open for everyone and we are a lively and friendly community. So you're welcome. Yeah, just a shout out to the Write the Docs Slack. Um, if anybody's interested in technical writing, transitioning into it or getting another job, I got my job through the Write the Docs Slack, just saying. Um, my current boss, posted in the jobs board and I um, got to find out about the job through there. So shout out to those guys because I got my job through them. <laughs> um, all right, thank you, Colm. I'm glad the talk was helpful. I, I know how scary and frustrating Git can be. I mean, honestly, I was like shaking in fear in my job for a very long time. Um, ah, you guys are saying it in Greek, if I stop, but I got love. Um, and uh, so yeah, I was shaking in fear whenever I had to do things in Git that were complicated or that I thought were complicated. So I understand the journey. And actually, my course is called Git Learning Journey because it's a journey, like, really, it's a slow, progressive thing. You're going to first understand certain things, you're not going to understand others but slowly but surely you can gain git confidence and do things with more confidence um i'm just gonna say it one more time just in case anybody uh, missed it before if anybody has anybody any other companies or organizations are interested in this kind of a workshop please do reach out to me i am looking for other entities um, that would be interested in this kind of a presentation or in git training or whatever so just saying, putting it out there again. Um, all right. Great, right, yeah, the recording. So uh, the recording, I believe, will be added at first and then will be shared, I think, in the Red the Docs YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, if you want to stay tuned, the best way is to um, join the Red the Docs uh, Slack channel community um, because we, we post all the updates in there. So, and also the meetup, of course, will, will uh, Spread the word once the video is up. Speaking of which, I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, again, and uh, see you next time. All right.